I just spent all this money buying the new MacBook Pros and in regular single threaded JavaScript tests, the browser tests the M1 MacBook Air seems to be the winner. <laughs> Well, I'm not done testing yet. There is one more machine I gotta test and that's the 16 inch MacBook Pro with the M1 Max processor. And since we have the Intel Core i9 available, might as well do a little comparison here with a 16 inch versus 16 inch. So again, just uh, to review, this machine right here is the new MacBook Pro 16 inch the notch edition, 64 gigs of RAM. And here is the 2019 MacBook Pro 16 inch, 64 gigs of RAM, no notch. Now you might have seen this guy in tests before against the M1, but today we're going up against the Max. Both machines are at rest right now. Everything is up to date with Monterey and all the versions of the software are the same. Now, just these machines sitting here and resting. You can take a look at this little program I have here called TG Pro, which tells you the RPM of the fan and the temperature of the CPUs. So here on the Intel machine, just resting, the fan is spinning at 1700 RPM and the general temperature is about 60 degrees centigrade. Centigrade or Celsius? I, I think I heard both before. Anyway, I'm gonna go with Celsius. You can see that uh, the CPU breakdown is here for the fans and I guess that AMD Radeon graphics chip is giving it is pulling up the temperature quite a bit there so on the max it's generally a much cooler atmosphere and the fan is completely off let's see if we can get that spun up now i'm going to kick things off with google chrome this time i'm going to maximize both windows here and let's head over to speedometer 2 and i'm going to start the test now while that's working i'd like to say thanks to a couple of you folks that have mentioned some interesting things to test one is promotion that's the new feature on the macbook pros where uh, the refresh rate go up to 100 20 hertz and maybe that could play a role in this test then there's the low versus high power mode we're going to test both of those and of course the browser window size i've maximized the browser to take up the full size of the window i did already run these tests and the browser window doesn't play a role in that at all other people commented that perhaps efficiency cores is what's being used on the macbook air m1 that's for my previous test if you haven't seen that check it out i'll link to that video down below uh, and that one has four efficiency cores as opposed to the new machines which only have two and that could be why the m1 did so well however in my test i've seen that the single threaded operation for this particular test only operates on the performance core on one performance core and uh, i came up with a little test to check that out so we'll do that as well all right we've got our first results folks it's not looking so good for the intel box and here are the results on the new MacBook Pro Max, we've got a score of 265. That's pretty good. The fans are off and the temperature is still the same. Now as for the Intel machine. I'm just kidding, it's not that bad. We're at about 1700 RPM for the fan and about 64 degrees Celsius. Celsius, I said Celsius that time for the ambient temperature. So not too difficult of a test for this machine, for either one of these machines to perform. However, the score on the Intel box is significantly lower. 148. I should also note that we are using Chrome for this test. I'm gonna close Chrome and let's open up Safari, which has shown to have better results in this particular test. So we are gonna do another test, this time with Safari, and let's kick things off. Now, while this is actually running, let's take a look at the activity monitor on both these machines. And you can see that we are using only one CPU on both of these. Probably not enough time to tell because it finished so quickly on the M1 Max at a score of 253. Surprisingly a little bit lower than Chrome. In my previous test, Safari did much better. But 253 is pretty close to 256. So we'll take it. A slightly better score for the Intel machine. And that went up to about 80 degrees Celsius while I was running that one test. Now let's focus in a little bit on this Max machine here because I am curious about those settings that you can change to see if that'll affect it. And the settings I'm talking about are ProMotion, high power versus low power modes. So let's do some adjustments. I'm gonna go to preferences here and battery. Let's start with this one, which is gonna be energy mode, low power or high power. It was set to automatic. So let's, let's go with low power for now and let's test this out. I'm going to rerun this test in low power. Now I should also say that right now this machine is running entirely on battery and I'll also do a plugged in test 
to do the comparison because I know I'll get some comments saying that if this machine is plugged in, it'll perform better. Let's let's test it out and see. Okay, 192 on the low power mode. So low power mode does affect this in a negative way. If you want to save batteries, you're gonna have to pay. Let's go back to battery here and switch this to high power mode now, which I'm guessing is gonna give us the same results as initially because, well, it was much higher, the score. So let's see, <laughs> 259. So, so that power mode really does affect it in a big way. And now it's time to plug this max in, MagSafe. And I'm using the out of the box 140 watt adapter, just in case anybody's wondering. There we go. Let's run this test one more time using the plugged in state. By the way, the fans have not even budged on this one. We are up to 60 degrees Celsius on it, oh, down to 59, but the fans are still not working. And we finished this test with a score of 256. So it doesn't look like having it plugged in is having any effect. Let's try promotion. And that's going to be under displays. Refresh rate is set to promotion. Let's change that to 60. Oh, my eyes. I'm so used to promotion now. Everything's much choppier. I'm just kidding. I can't really tell. Let's uh, refresh this and start this test one more time. Now I am still plugged in. So let's see what the score is here. And if we open up activity monitor and take a look at the CPUs here, the CPU breakdown, you'll see that, yeah, most of that test is running on this one core three performance core, as you can see right there. Yeah, the efficiency cores are not being affected by this. It doesn't look like from this chart, at least. And it looks like most of the action is happening on core three at the moment. There might be some um, scheduling going on between core four and core three, the performance cores, but most of it is on core three. All right, so we're done and we got a score of 259. What does this tell us? Well, basically that means that ProMotion is having no effect on this JavaScript test, the single threaded test in this Speedometer 2 benchmark, which is basically testing a bunch of different web application frameworks like Angular, React, and Vue, and so on, and doing uh, adding and subtracting to-do items from lists. So that's not having any effect, and neither is high versus low power. Another commenter, Alexey Karchenko, said, uh, maybe there's some background tasks running, and that's why we're not getting as high a score on these machines as we are on the M1. And I have turned off all my background processes, including the spotlight indexing. So thanks for that suggestion. And uh, I don't think it's added any performance benefits to this test, but nonetheless, a good suggestion. Another commenter, Mike Park, suggested that if I'm to understand the comment correctly here, uh, maybe there's a glitch in the scheduling process that mistakenly sends the process or distributes these tasks to high performance cores and high efficiency cores incorrectly. And perhaps there is some of that going on. I'm not sure what is causing this difference in the M1 versus the M1 Pro and the M1 Max. Again, if you haven't seen that video, go check it out. And for those folks that have the M1, should be pretty happy about this particular test. Of course, I will be doing multi-core tests here as well and more JavaScript tests. Now, there is one more fun little thing we can do here. I'm gonna pop open Chrome here and go to the console and uh, Boys and girls, don't try this at home. I'm gonna do an infinite loop right here, just like that, press enter, and guess what? Now we're using up 100% of one of our cores. So let's check it out. Activity monitor, there's Google Chrome, CPU up to 100% on one processor, and that's gonna stay about 100% there. However, if I pop open another tab, and do another for loop, another infinite for loop, there we go, now, We've got two processes going on at the same time, both pegging 100%. What am I trying to do here? Well, I wanna take a look at the CPU load and the distribution of these tasks between the cores. Now, I don't have exactly what's running on what core, but you can tell that core three has been pretty active lately and it's now very active towards the end there. And so is core four. Core four has now started being pretty darn active. Look at that. Got this whole green block going on over here. Now let's pop open another tab and let's do another four infinite loop and let's do another one. Okay. In activity monitor, you now see four of these things, each taking up 100% of the CPU, which means core. In the CPU history, you'll see that four performance cores are taken on that load and efficiency cores are pretty much staying the same. So that means that these processes, these heavy JavaScript processes are actually executing on the performance cores. The fans are still off, by the way. Should we max this out? I mean, we should probably max this out, shouldn't we? We're doing it, might as well. For loop, another for loop, another for loop, and another for loop. 
All right, we've got how many of these now? We've got eight of them running. And you can see that all eight performance cores are now working on it, having a hard time. And that CPU load is pretty much at max. And finally, finally, we've got the fan that just kicked in at 1600 RPM. However, this machine is at 83 degrees, which is still not terrible. And uh, it's not that hot to the touch. It's warm. It's pretty warm, but I don't hear anything, which is pretty nice. It's a nice change. I've added two more and it's getting a little bit laggy. All right, I've added a bunch more, but I can't hear anything. The fan is just sticking around that 1500 RPM area. The temperature is sticking around 82 degrees and it's just, uh, it's not adding anymore. But this is probably because, yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, so now these CPUs, even though I have all these processes, how many do I have here? 12, they're not all working at 100% anymore. It's being divided between the eight CPUs which is at maximum now, so that's all we get. Now, I do wanna do one more thing, and that's I wanna grab the M1 here and run the test one more time on the M1. Okay, it's almost done. Let's see what score we get. We're looking to be 259, which is the maximum score I got on the max, and we got 272. So there's proof again that the M1 for this particular benchmark happens to be the winner. More tests coming but this was the first set of tests uh, I did for the new machines. And so far, I think I'm gonna cry because I spent so much money, but it's probably gonna be okay. <laughs> Look at the CPU load on that one. All right, folks, if you found this useful or entertaining, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. I'll see you next time.